Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here, and today I want to talk to you guys about 2019's Midsummer. Midsummer is writer director Ari Aster's follow up to Hereditary, which was one of my favorite movies of last year and featured my overall favorite performance from last year, courtesy of Tony Collette. Midsummer focuses on a young couple who travel with some friends to an isolated village in Sweden to observe a, let's just say, eccentric commune celebrate the summer solstice. Soon, however, the group discovers that the commune's rites and rituals, particularly how they celebrate their members' 72nd birthdays, are a little extreme. Midsummer opens almost like a kissing cousin to Hereditary, exploring similar themes of grief before immersing the audience in a bewitching and, at times, WTF journey of a grieving and lost woman and her all too self absorbed companions, including her increasingly disinterested boyfriend. At first, the commune and their practices appear like harmless, loving gestures toward one another in nature but it turns out they have ulterior motives for inviting in outsiders. Beyond the first trailer for Midsummer, I desperately tried to avoid future trailers or early reviews of the film so not to have anything spoiled. However, I did see a quote from Aster in which he summarized Midsummer as a breakup movie. And after having seen the film, I can say yeah, it's kind of a breakup movie. A nearly two and a half hour, very slow burning, strange, at times comical, though I'm not sure if it's intended to be, and utterly mesmerizing trip of a breakup movie that I have really mixed feelings about. From a technical point of view, Midsummer is mesmerizing. Aster is a visionary filmmaker, there's no doubting that. The film takes place almost entirely in pristine daylight and the landscapes of the Swedish countryside are gorgeous. It's a heavenly setting for some hellish goings on. The performances in the film were also quite good, particularly that of Florence Pugh. She portrayed a flawed character, trying to make sense of a tragedy while ultimately trying to find herself and her place in the world. As far as the plot for Midsummer is concerned, I felt like I'd seen this movie before. The Wicker Man certainly came to mind first, but there are many movies with a similar setup, involving outsiders either invited to or invading the remote commune of a religious cult or indigenous people, observing their strange behaviors or pagan rituals, and discovering all too late that they can't leave. If you're familiar with any of those movies, the vast majority of Midsummer will play out in a predictable manner. Also, Midsummer is not really a horror movie. I know it's being marketed as such, but it's really not. Granted, there are a couple of horrific moments in the film, but calling Midsummer a horror movie is a stretch. Also, when I said the movie was a slow burn, I meant it. At time, Midsummer feels a little too slow. In fact, it was uncomfortably slow at certain points. Perhaps Aster intended that to display how uncomfortable the characters themselves were becoming with the situation they found themselves in. Aster's methodical pacing could be seen as a way of enchanting his audience, but at times the movie's flow just felt draggy. Midsummer does do a good job of building tension, but with little payoff. You get the sense that there is a shocking or disturbing turn around every corner, and I was fully expecting a finale that would leave me stunned. Unfortunately, none of that happened. I didn't find anything in Midsummer to be particularly shocking or disturbing, and after all that buildup, the finale of the film felt flat. And, aside from Danny, I really felt nothing for the rest of the characters in the film, and could care less about them. Continually throughout Midsummer, the characters are drugged or dosed for various reasons. Leaving the theater, I felt like I'd been drugged too, but not in a good way. In a what did I just watch and what happened to the last two and a half hours of my life kind of way. Technically, Midsummer is a feast for the eyes and ears. It's an incredibly well-made film from a filmmaker with a unique and captivating vision. However, the narrative of Midsummer I found kind of thin and cold. The movie is a setup without a payoff. I left Midsummer in a haze. Actually, hours later, I still feel it, as if someone spiked my cherry icy. Maybe some of Midsummer just went over my head. Maybe Aster knew his narrative was thin. His insistence on such labored plotting and symbolism over storytelling feels pretentious here, and underwhelming. I'm on the fence about Midsummer. I can't recommend it, but I don't necessarily want to dissuade anyone from going out and seeing it. Much like Hereditary, Midsummer will likely be a divisive movie. As a matter of fact, I almost feel obliged to persuade you to go out and support it, simply because it's not a remake. A remake of a movie that's already been remade, a reboot, or a reboot of a franchise that's already been rebooted. There's a lot to like and admire when it comes to Midsummer, but the movie just didn't land for me. If you've seen Midsummer, please let me know your thoughts on it down in the comment section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching, or in this case, listening. I really appreciate it. Take care, have a great 4th of July, and until next time, peace.
Join the A Buck a Month Club and help support my channel on Patreon. Thank you to my current patrons, Kevin Smythe, Orc145626, B-Movie Mike, Robert Sobel, Turi Delamore, Stephen Flanagan, Lori Holt, Craig Farrand, Farron Sutton, Jeremiah Lambert, Grindhouse Grotto, Derek Janna, Demon Waffles, Simon Clark, Stone Gasman, Zachary Barton, James Welch, Eli Geisler, Jeff Overing, Pete Toll, Kyle McGuire, Jay the Stingray, Lauren Dixon, Andrew McDonald, Dave Barnes, Jonathan Lundy, Chris Gonzalez, Trenton Bowser, Jason Breitenbach, Brandon Bizdick, and Steak Sauce. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.